Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. Right now we are getting started with the chapter one which is to talk about the testing process and as a part of this we have a lot of topics to be covered which you can see on the screen now and of course we will be getting started with the introduction and test planning as a part of this tutorial and uh, of course we will be talking a little bit in more detail and of course with the advanced approach of understanding how exactly to make decisions at a certain point of time. So this entire syllabus will help you to determine what is the responsibility of the test manager at different point of time and different stages and different phases of the life cycle. So this tutorials will be slightly longer because you need to understand a lot of things before you can actually look forward to write the examination. So be patient and learn everything in detailed way. The very first tutorial today we are covering is of course the introduction and the first part of the 1.2 that is test planning. And in the second part of this tutorial we'll be covering the monitoring and control. Of course from the foundation you do remember that of course we have learned something called as a test process. Now initially the test process discuss about the entire testing life cycle and talks about a lot of phases like planning, monitoring and control, analysis, design, implementation, execution and evaluating exit criteria and reporting and following that the test closure activities. Now each of these stages has several activities to be discussed and has major responsibility of the test manager in order to monitor, plan for all these activities and definitely take necessary control actions at different point of time. So let's look forward to what we have got in our syllabus from the test planning point of view. As a part of the test planning, first of all, planning is for the overall life cycle of testing as well as the test levels which you may have within each of these phases. Now, of course, when we say the test levels, we are talking about unit, integration, system, acceptance and a lot of other non-functional levels which are being conducted as a part of the entire life cycle. So test planning is the major responsibility of the test manager where test manager follows the project plan and schedule in order to determine the overall plan of the life cycle and in fact the initial planning for the test levels can also be done right at the test planning phase itself because you don't just wait for the stages or different levels to come into picture and start thinking of what to do there. So test manager has to be uh, well planned for any of the levels which you will be conducting as a part of the overall life cycle and of course the most important thing here is to plan in early stages is to align all these activities with those of the software development life cycle activities. I hope you remember from your foundation again that a good characteristics of testing involves a development activity with a corresponding testing activity. So no matter what you do all your activities must be aligned with those of the development activities like architecture design creations or development of the codes must all be you know aligned in such a way that as soon as the code is available you start with the unit testing or as soon as the unit testing is done simultaneously you can start with integration testing and a lot of many other things including the entry and exit criteria of each level talking about the availability of the code in order to begin with certain activities so yes the planning definitely plays a vital role and test planning also includes identifying the methods for gathering and tracking the matrices we do remember from the foundation that uh, one of the activity of the test planning phase is to select the matrices. Now here being a test manager you will be collecting different matrices in order to determine that what matrices will be helpful at different point of time during the entire life cycle and how they will help you to monitor the progress on the project and definitely these matrices will only be the thing which will help you to determine if any control actions are necessary at any point of time to be deployed. The strategy also plays a vital role here which is definitely selected well before the test planning and uh, definitely there are several approaches which you can collectively call it as a strategy and we will be talking about them in more detail in upcoming chapters so don't worry about that and uh, the strategy selected for the testing project will definitely help you to determine the task and uh, that should occur during the different uh, planning stages and of course uh, how exactly your effort will be allocated for each and every activity in order to accomplish the goal of testing and uh, achieve the objective of testing. Also to add we have risk analysis being conducted at any point of time so if you are following a risk based approach the risk information will also be used to determine the priorities of various testing activities. Sometimes a lot of certain activities will be 
pre-pawned in order to meet the expectations or mitigate the risk which you would have identified and test manager being a test manager you have to you know keep account of all the project risk items as well because you don't want anything to hamper your schedules and deliveries at any point of time the test planning stage is also where the approach of to testing is clearly defined by the test manager including which test level will be employed the goals the objective of each test level and what techniques will be used at each level of testing so right from the planning phase you determine everything like what levels we will be conducting how we will be organizing them what kind of tools do we have to support and of course we are talking about the techniques like you know equivalence partition or uh, you know decision table testing or any kind of you know other uh, techniques like uh, mcdc or you know, MCD, which is for non-functional testing. So yes, test manager will be completely responsible for determining and selecting certain test techniques, which will be best applicable to your process at any point of time to, you know, make sure that you have a good success rate at the end of the day. Further to continue, we are talking about the traceability and relationships which may exist between the test basis and the test conditions or the test cases which you are preparing. So again, being a test manager, it is your core responsibility to establish a good traceability option which allows uh, different work items or work products to be integrated with each other. Now we are talking about the integration between the test basis and the test conditions. Of course, the test conditions are derived from a lot of specifications or designs, or probably sometime even code. So the traceability must be established in order to see any kind of impact of changes on the test basis. So what if your two requirements are modified tomorrow? If requirements are being updated, then of course, the test cases might not be sufficient enough to fulfill the needs of the requirements at that point of time. So if in case tomorrow requirement has been modified, and you have a good traceability between the requirement and the test cases which you have written for them, then of course this traceability will help you determine that is your test cases still beneficial to achieve the complete coverage or you need to write something more in order to achieve the change uh, as a part of the requirement changes. So yes, building up and setting up a good traceability option could be as a part of the test management tool within your organization is definitely a responsibility of the test manager. Now, relationship is just not limited to the test basis and the test condition which you create. It could be even between the work products which are simultaneously created by different organizations or different team within your organization. For example, the design team creates a lot of artifacts. The development team create a lot of codes and algorithms and you know many other factors which might be integrated further with your executions or test cases. So you need to make sure that what are those work products which you will be accessing to and will be having a traceability too. So make sure that if there is any kind of dependency, then you establish that uh, in order to meet the expectation. Uh, further to this plan, uh, this will also have list of specific features of the software that are within our scope. So as a part of planning, you will determine uh, what kind of you know part of the application you will be considering as a part of your testing scope because not everything as a part of an application or release will be under the scope of testing so when you determine the scope of testing you do consider what part of the application will be under testing what kind of features do we have to test for example you are considering the security parameters you're considering the performance parameters but maybe you're not considering the portability feature this time because this application is only supposed to work on one platform and it's not going to go into multiple platforms so portability testing is not in our scope so of course, based on the requirement features and certain set of functionalities, you will determine what levels will be required. Now, there are also uh, requirements at this stage of the test manager to work with project architects to define the initial test environment specification. We do remember that deciding on what environment will be used will be a part of test analysis because once you analyze all the requirements, you can determine what environment will be sufficient for that. But initial establishment or you know selection or designing of the test environment can happen right at the test planning phase because during test planning you can consult with the architects to see what kind of interface or what kind of architecture is the application going to have and based on that we can at least start laying out down the foundation of the environment which will be required to set up in future in order to run your test cases so yes you can definitely being a test manager uh, coordinate with the project 
architects to understand what is the tool or what is the software all about, what kind of platforms, what kind of architecture, what kind of web services it is going to use. So you can start thinking about setting up your environment at that point of time. And of course, at the same time, for all these activities, you need to make sure what kind of time, what kind of effort, what set of uh, you know infrastructure and budget is required to conduct all these activities. So budget allocation will also be a part of planning phase itself. Of course, you will have something more to understand in detail is test estimation. But yeah, from certain extent, you do have some of the uh, effort allocation and budget allocation right from the planning phase itself. Finally, all external dependencies and associated service level agreements should be identified and if required, initial contact should be made. Examples of dependencies are resources uh, request to outside groups, dependencies on other project and external vendors of development partners, the development, develop, deployment team and the database administrators. So there are a lot of things. For example, if you're making use of any tools, uh, then of course they come from uh, outside vendors and you need to coordinate with them to procure the tools or procure the services which you will be renting or leasing at any point of time in order to provide your team the access and accessibility to that. So making sure that all these resources and setting up the contracts with the external organizations or maybe, you know, if you're working in a product-based organization, with their internal teams also, you have to raise requests to access some of the features or hire the resources for the testing. So test manager at the beginning during the planning phase takes care of all these factors, be it the test level, be it the executions, the conditions, the test data, the environment, and the effort allocation. A lot of such things will be taken care of by the manager in order to determine and select the matrices for the monitoring purposes. Well, that was just a good detailed one uh, explanation of the test planning from the manager point of view. And we will be learning all our manager point of view aspects in upcoming tutorials as well. So stay tuned for that. And please expect these tutorials to be a little longer because we are talking about a manager certification, which is not straightforward. It is completely scenario-based certification. So you will have a lot to explore and more and more to understand. If you understand everything, it will be helpful. So I'm putting my efforts. I want you also to put your efforts and be patient to learn everything. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.